Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to have a look at this Bang & Olufsen speaker. It's been sent in to me by a friend of mine. Um, it was dropped on the floor with the power connected to it and as you can see the power jack has come separate. Got the power lead here. Which is uh, USB 3 and in here is the power jack. I will just reposition so as you can see there is the power jack it's got some proper it's proper tiny little terminals on here and it's broken off here and here what we're actually going to do is we're not going to put this jack back on we're going to put another socket or a cable soldered into it to allow it to be charged First thing I found is that you twist the lid and it comes off. It's got a reasonable size speaker in it. I'm going to start by just removing the, the screws. A little tweeter here as well. I expect this will sound pretty good. This has been previously dismantled and I believe there was some glue holding it together. So that little washes on the screws. Real nice piece of design. So we're in and we'll lift that off straight away we're presented by uh, a good quantity of connections there so I'm going to just unplug got quite a, a, a sizable speaker there and uh, a tiny little tweet so I'm gonna put this to one side and we're gonna have a look at the base here and we see here where the connectors come off so I'll just put this onto a zoom. The connector's pulled off here. So when we look at this, we've got a battery here, which is a good sized battery. Obviously this is a class D amplifier, Bluetooth receiver. I'm not sure what all this is doing. It's probably charge management or something. And it looks like it's got another jack of some description there. So I'm just going to have a closer look at this and I'll be back. So as we can see there, there are the terminals that have um, are pulled off. Unfortunately, some of the pads have lifted. So it does look like we're going to have to probably find somewhere else around here on the board to connect the five volts to. But when we're looking at this here, we can see off this terminal here, there's quite a thick cable coming off it to the end of this capacitor and what I would say is the ground there there's also quite a thick track so I'm, I have a suspicion that if we inject 5 volts there and there onto this pad here and this pad here we're going to find that it will power up so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the battery out and I'm going to take the board out There's so some little buttons around here, look. They're nice. It's a very well built piece of gear, as you would expect from a company such as Bang & Olufsen.
just going to place that out of the way. Okay. So we're going to have a look at the back of the board. I will put a zoom on it. There's one on the back here. There's not actually that much that we can do anything with. Some test points. Um, there's a little bit more electronics on here. Some sort of power control circuit there. So I'm just going to get the plug and have a look at the front of the plug. And that's the plug that came off there. I'm looking here at the plug. And you can see on the plug where some of the tracks have actually been pulled off with it. When we're looking at this zoom in here, really does look as though that resistor there is either the ground or it is the it's capacitor on the power supply. So I'm going to actually inject five volts across that and see what we get. So I've got a cut off USB cable here and I'm just going to trim off some of the end of this. I'm going to just trim that away and put that out of the way. Don't want any bits of wire landing in it. We want the red and black. We're not worried about the the data cables. Um, what I am going to do is just snip them off like that and we'll just put a little bit of heat shrink over this. The reason and logic behind that is if this is plugged into a computer what we don't want to do is short out the data lines. don't need a lot of extra room so I'm just going to try and splay it very slightly there we go we cut the cable through so I'm going to pull that through and I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink back on there I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink back on there look <laughs> Okay, so we've got two wires here. And put a bit of solder on those. And then we're going to just trim them down. I want them to be literally millimeters. Now I'm trying to set the cap.
Okay, so as you can see there, we have gone onto the end of this capacitor here which we identify goes to the pins and we've gone to what we know to be a ground point because it's the casing or the shell of the casing and um, what we want to see is this charge light come on here when we apply 5 volts we're hoping to see the light come on I've got a USB extension plugged into a USB socket uh, oh hang on there we go we've got a charge light come on indicating that it's charging okay that's brilliant so now we've seen that we're going to um, reassemble it and when we put this back in place we're going to seat this in some hot melt glue so then here's the board I'm going to pull this cable back out a bit hmm. Gonna get rid of that battery. What I'm just trying not to do is pull off what I've just done. So I think we're gonna leave a bit of a loop in it like that. And hopefully there's enough clearance around everything for it for me. So I'm gonna leave a bit of a loop in the cable there. Um, we're going to start by screwing this board back down obviously there's the screws for the battery here so we're not going to put those back in What we're going to do is before we actually glue it back together I'm going to check it works okay some more screws somewhere does that go in oh look that goes into there so these screws here at the back here are screw downs so we should put them back in place Sit the battery back in place and screw that back in. Just four screws on that. I've got a ribbon cable to plug back into here so what we're going to do is just see if that's a clicky one no it's not plug the battery back in um, you know that just looks like a, a, an infrared receiver on there so I'm not going to connect that up for a minute I will um, place this in place and connect up the speaker Back into this connector. Is that the right connector for the speaker? No, it's not. This is the right connector for the speaker. So, okay, so we plug that back in. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some power onto it. I'm going to try tethering to it. Okay, it's turning back off again. So, what I can conclude is the battery's really flat. So, I'm going to leave it for a little bit okay so now it's been on charge for a bit it's better and uh, let's press the Bluetooth button till it goes blue okay I'm connected to it 
and I'm just going to play a little bit of their free music. There we go. <laughs> that works. Okay, so here's the repair we've effected, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the top of here. over here a little splodge of hot melt finally we're going to put the little bit of foam back in place here and reassemble the speaker putting the four screws back in Then the last job is to put the lid back on, drops into place and then turns and that's it, sorted. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>